What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by the channel. Today's project is this pressure washer that's powered by a Honda engine and the problem is it's been sitting outside in the weather and I don't know if it works anymore. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it and hopefully we can fix it. In this video, we try and repair this pressure washer. However, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. I'm not sure how long this thing was sitting outside, but by its condition, I think it was left uncovered, which might have actually saved it from completely rusting apart. And that's because after getting wet, any moisture would have dried up pretty quickly. Now the problem though isn't being stored outdoors, but whether or not it was correctly prepared for long-term storage. Small engines do not store well unless proper steps are taken to make sure it comes out of storage in working condition. Now since we don't know anything about this engine, we'll start with the basics. The first thing I want to do is check to make sure that this engine still has compression. The easiest way to do that is to slowly pull on the rope and feel if the engine is fighting back, which I can safely say it is, so that's great news. Now this is just a rough test and we'll do a more thorough test later on. The next thing I want to check is that we have spark and for that I like to use a spark checker which can be bought online for just a few dollars. Now to use it, just install it in line with the spark plug, make sure that the kill switch is in the on position, pull the rope and watch for an orange glow in the tester. Luckily, there was an orange glow in the tester, so that means we do have spark. The next thing I want to do is check the engine oil, and if that's good, we'll put some gas into the carburetor's throat so we can do a test start. It looks like we have plenty of oil, but it's pretty dirty, so we might do an oil change later on. Now, if you didn't see an orange glow, try disconnecting the low oil level switch, as it might be bad. And if you still didn't see an orange glow, then you might have a bad ignition coil. Fortunately, it started and ran for a few seconds, which is great news. Now, if yours doesn't start, try using starting fluid instead of gasoline. If it still doesn't start, try replacing the spark plug. The next thing I want to do is drain the gas out of the tank so we can inspect it for any issues. Then we can safely remove the carb for an inspection. I will say this about the gas in the tank. It doesn't smell like gasoline anymore. So this is very old gas and has turned into something else other than fuel for an engine. So here's what came out of the tank, and as you can see, it looks more like tea than fresh gas. And that means that this gas is more than a couple of years old, and I hate to say it, but that's bad news for our fuel system. Now, if the fuel valve was closed, it might have saved the carb from a sticky mess. However, most people never touch the fuel valve, so more than likely, when we get the carb out and open, it's probably going to be really bad news. I also noticed there's a bolt missing from the air filter housing, so someone's been in here before. So unfortunately, we just can't slide the carburetor off the engine because of these studs, and also part of the frame for the pressure washer is in the way. That means we need to double nut the right stud so we can remove it. Just put one of the nuts on facing the wrong way, then put another one on facing the right way. Tighten them together and then turn the outer nut counterclockwise to remove the stud. Then we can maneuver the carb away from the engine. Before we inspect the carburetor, I want to use my compression tester to see just how healthy this engine actually is. You can find these online for less than $20, and to use it, just remove the spark plug, install the tester into the engine, and then pull the rope several times. It will then measure how much pressure the engine can make on the compression stroke. We want to see a reading well over 100 psi, but since this engine has a compression release, a number over 75 will be good enough. So the reading is about 94 psi, which is actually really good considering the compression release. Now what if you wanted a reading without the release getting in the way? Well try using a drill to spin the engine over instead. The easiest way is to remove the recoil assembly and then use a socket adapter on the flywheel bolt. So the new reading is a very high 180 psi, which means this engine probably hasn't been used much at all. Now if your reading is over 100 but less than 150 psi, it just means that your engine has some wear to it. And if it's below 50 psi, well then your engine is seriously worn or damaged. The last thing we need to do is inspect the carburetor for any issues. 
So this is the worst possible situation, next to it being completely corroded on the inside of the carburetor. The reason is that if this was corroded, there's no choice. You have to replace the carburetor. But when it's gummed up with old gas, you think you might be able to clean all of this off with a wire brush, a half a can of carb cleaner, and about an hour or so of your time. The problem is that it's a gamble, and your chances of cleaning this up without proper tools are very slim. So when a carb is this bad, I would always recommend just replacing it because it's less frustrating. If for some reason there's no option to replace it, just be ready for multiple cleanings along with failed attempts to get it started. You might eventually get it working again, but it may not be running well enough to actually use. So this is the new carb that I ordered and it came with a few extra parts such as gaskets and a fuel line which we desperately need as the old one has become soft over time. It even came with a new choke lever as well. The first thing we need to do is look it over and make sure it looks a lot like the original one which ours does. Now a few small cosmetic differences is okay as these wouldn't hurt the way the carb works. The next thing to do is to remove the fuel tank so we can replace the original fuel line. Once the tank is off the engine, just be very careful when taking off the fuel line as the outlet on the tank is made out of plastic. If you do break it, they still make a replacement part for it, otherwise you might have to buy a whole new fuel tank. After the fuel line has been connected, we'll just rerun the line to the carb area, then replace the tank back onto the engine. For some reason, the front hole on the carb is a different size than the back hole. What that means is that you can't pull the stud out from the front, but instead you have to pull it out from the rear. Fortunately, this isn't the case for the new carb as it can pass right through it. You can see that if I try to push the stud through the front of the original carb, it gets stuck. Now after moving the stud over to the new carb, we can now install it back onto the engine. Now, I'm not trying to discourage you from at least attempting to clean the original carb. The only problem is it takes a lot of time and patience that most people just don't have. If, however, you do have extra time and patience available, then by all means try and clean it. Who knows, you might get lucky and get it working again. With my luck, it would take two to three cleanings, and if I got it working again, it may not be working well enough to the point that the pressure washer runs poorly and then becomes hard to use. Another reason why your pressure washer might be running poorly is a clogged pilot jet which is located right below the idle set screw. Now this jet deals with air and not gas so the hole is extremely small and can easily get clogged with dirt. To clear the jet you can either use a single wire from a brass brush or a precision drill bit to clear it. Now if you don't have either, compressed air should also clear it. Now once the new carb is on the engine, it's now finally time to put some fresh no ethanol gas in the tank and try starting it. Since I didn't connect a garden hose to the pump, there is a chance I could overheat it. However, I don't intend on running the engine for more than one minute, so it shouldn't hurt it. So in the end, replacing the gummed up carb with a brand new one worked really well and on the first go around. Unfortunately, this didn't come with a hose or a wand, so I can't test how well the pump works. In the future, I would always suggest draining the gas by removing the drain bolt so the chances of this happening again will be almost zero. So my question is, do you keep gas in your power washer between uses or do you leave the tank empty? Now, to be completely honest, I keep gas in mine. However, I use 100% gas with no ethanol, and I also use a stabilizer as well, so I'm not worried about the gas turning into varnish while it's not being used. Now, sometimes I don't use my power washer for months, but it always starts for me. However, if I knew that I wasn't going to use it for over a year, I would drain the gas and leave the tank empty. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions, and I hope to see you in the next video.